Hello there, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterill here with a special treat, and I truly mean that. It's not often, in fact, never, that I get to speak with somebody who's been involved somehow with mixed martial arts longer than I have. And this man you're looking at right now, Lee Mian, owner of Canadian Martial Arts Center and promoter of the Canada's longest running mixed martial arts organization, Rumble in the Cage, out of Lethbridge, Alberta, is fighting this weekend at Havoc FC 17 in Lethbridge, sorry, in Red Deer, against Jason Douglas. Lee, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, feel great. Ready to go. We, we had a chance to speak just briefly before we started the interview. And I mentioned how one of my favorite mixed martial arts stories I ever tell is that when I first met you in like, I don't know, 2006, 2007, you said something to me that I recount to everybody I meet almost. And that is the phrase, fighters fight. So when I saw that your name was added to this fight card just recently, I was not surprised in the slightest. Man, you are just a hardcore. You love to fight, don't you? Yeah, it's a great challenge. And uh, there's lots of reasons why I do it, different reasons at different times. But, you know, the just the pucker factor, the, the get out of your comfort zone, the challenge yourself, step up to something that you're, you know, that there's fear involved. Uh, I think we need to do those things. And so... I try and push myself in those areas all the time, whether it's, you know, it's coaching or teaching or my own physical fitness or, again, the fight game. I'm just finding out where, you know, what are your limits and what are you willing to do and how do you keep your the mind game out of it? That's the biggest struggle for all fighters. I think well, everybody in life is how they keep their mind out of the, of the situation and just get the problem done and solve the problem, come up with an answer and do it. You know, usually the answer is solved usually by hard work and just... Uh, just go for it and don't hesitate man we think too much and we second guess ourselves and all that and sometimes we just have to say yes and uh, just go for it so that's kind of my my mantra nowadays as i get older it's like life is short been through too many hassles in life and seen too many things go wrong in life with family friends and and businesses everything right so it's like you don't know how much time you have left and i'm just uh, grateful for every day i have that i'm able to train uh teach fight uh, go to fight cards and do the things I love to do. And uh, again, challenge myself. A lot of people don't, you know, they're in their comfort zones and they're just coasting along. Um, and that's great, you know, but I think everyone needs to find something, something they're passionate about that they're willing to step out of their comfort zone for every day. Um, the fight game makes you step out of your comfort zone every day in some capacity. And, uh, and that's why I appreciate about it. It's real. And uh, that's why we love it. It's safe to say that you have accomplished a lot in mixed martial arts and, and in life. You're of a certain age now. That's how people refer to us, of a certain age. Is there anything that you're yeah. most proud of? Um, you know, I, I, I say this a lot and jokingly, but I know, in some seriousness to it is I've been around this long in the MMA sport and the teaching and whatever that just because I'm too stubborn to quit and kind of outlasted everybody that kind of started and then they, they peter out or, you know, they had a good run and then they, they move on to something else where I'm not smart enough to do something else or I'm just too stubborn to quit. Um, so, but I, it, over that time, um, you know, I have built something that's pretty phenomenal to me as my gym and the family there and all my students, the ones that, you know, are there now and the ones that were there before and left and move on to other things that they're all friends to me. And uh, whether they, you know, they stop training with me and go train somewhere else, it doesn't matter to me. We built a friendship and connection and, and that um, the legacy of that, of the gym and the people that I've encountered and been able to share moments with, uh, that means the most to me. And, you know, the fight card thing, you know, they're starting to rumble back in 2000 and having the longest running MMA show uh, means a lot to me too, because again, the friendships that we built, the fighters that, you know, I haven't seen someone in 10 years, like, oh yeah, I fought on your show at Rumble five i'm like i barely remember those you know yesterday let alone number five but you know, it's such a great connection of having people and having people uh participate in the events i do and the fans that come out and it's just such a, a social thing and um it just means a lot to me to, to have the connection with people and that's my biggest uh thing i love going to fight cards i love meeting people I like seeing people and um networking with people and so just having all those connections um, means the most to me and that's what I'm proud of and whether guys you know get in UFC or don't get in UFC that, that's that's great little things but that's not the the end end goal for me in a sense of satisfaction um, having that loyalty of the students 
Um, and, uh, you know, my friends and all this over the years, it's just that that connection means, means the world to me. So I can just imagine how special it is for them as well, because, you know, a lot of people, uh, train, whether it's mixed martial arts or any other kind of martial arts, and they all have coaches or multiple coaches, but I don't know if any of them have a coach who's put as much on the line as you have over the years. I mean, you just had complete and utter focus and dedication to, to this endeavor of yours and you lead by example, right? You're may I ask how old you are now, Lee? Uh, 56. Yeah. 56. So I'm 54. You're just a little bit yeah. older than I am. And here you are about to get into a bare knuckle fight, uh, in front of a crowd of people. That's incredible. And then you just must be able to look at you with pride and say, Hey, that's my coach. Yeah, I think it might, you might think I'm, Hey, that's my coach. He's an idiot, but, uh, uh <laughs> it's good. You know, it makes for, it, it takes away that I have a lot of guys joke around. They'll be complaining about something about whatever. And they're like, Oh, wait a minute. Coach is still fighting. So I can't complain, you know? And, and that, that just again goes to show the mindset I want them to have is yeah, there's always going to be barriers. There's always, we're always having injuries where financial difficulties, whatever there is in life is going to come up. We just, you know, accept it and move on, um, change it if we can, you know, and uh, do what we can with it. Make it, make it work. Find an answer. That's why I love jujitsu. It's about solving problems. Uh, fight games about solving problems. And so that's what we need to do in life as well. Is we got a problem presented to us. We got to solve the problem, and we're going to conquer. We're not going to quit no matter what. Even if we lose the match, we're not quitting. You know, right. we're going to keep trying and keep going on. And that's that's why I want my students to know, and I want them to always be encouraged to do that with their lives, and whether they're in the gym or or at home with their families. So, I'm sure. You know, if I ask a question like, what have you learned from MMA? That's kind of a really broadly scoped question, right? Like you could give me anything, but I'm, I'm willing to bet that mixed martial arts has really truly taught you amongst other things that you need to have faith in yourself. And I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I'm just, I'm stumped. I don't even know what I'm going to say, Lee. I don't even know if I have a question in there somewhere, but MMA yeah. has probably taught you a lot about yourself. Is there anything that surprised you? about yourself that you've learned over the years? Um, you, you know, I didn't start till I was fighting until I was 32. So I started wow. late, you know, when I'm my, my first fight, I, I'm, I tell guys the story of, it was a pancreas rules fight. Um, the guy was a blue belt at the time. I didn't have any belt. I didn't even like really knew very little. I just loved fighting, was doing Kempo karate. Thought, man, we can do that. You know, we've seen one UFC or whatever couple of UFCs, like, yeah, I can do that. And you get in there and you fight. And I shattered my, both bones in my left forearm, palm striking the guy in the head. And the fight, it was a seven minute fight. And we kept fighting. And every time I tried hitting him, I just, the pain was so incredible because my arm was shattered, but I didn't know at the time. It just, something was wrong. Uh, eventually he got me on the ground, mounted me and just sat over top of me and was bleeding on me, but just controlling mount, but wasn't doing any damage. And I just kept bridging. And bridging, you know, because again, after people say, well, why did you do this? Why did that? But I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, what my students know now, you know, guys train for two months, know more jiu-jitsu than I knew going <laughs> yeah. into that fight. Yeah. Right? You know, I knew some basic stuff. And you, you see this, you see that, whatever. But um, didn't really know what I was doing. But to, so to see the progress of that and, you know, what have I learned from that is like, again, be resilient. There's lots of times when I question myself and like, why am I doing this, man? I mean, you should not be with injuries. Like you should not be fighting right now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a struggle some days to get out of bed. And then you, you know, you get, you get healthy again. You start, you, it drives you to fix things because I, you know, who wants to lose? So you lose the match because you know, you weren't in shape or you lose the match because you couldn't move your leg properly. Uh, but you know, you find a way to fix that problem. You go, go back to the gym and you solve the problem. You see the right physio person, whatever it is. Uh, you clean your diet up, you know, you do other things. And so um, it just taught me that no matter how much I screw up as a fighter, as a person, as a coach, um, there's always that redemption of knowing you can try again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what, what I love about MMA. It's, it's so in your face. It's such a challenge physically, mentally. Um, you have to show up. And if you don't show up, you know, you chickened out. And you have to live with that and you have to deal with it. You back over the fight because you got scared. Man, I get it. It happens. But now you have to live with that. So do you fix the problem? Do you go back in and you solve why you why you backed out? Um, do you go, you know, see a sports psychologist? Do you what do you do 
um, to make it right for yourself. And then you get back in there and fight. And I don't care if you, if you win your fight when you come back. I care that you don't end on a quit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the big thing to me. Is like, I don't care if you lose all your fights. The fact you're willing to step in there and go, now, if you want to win a fight, maybe you have to train more, may have to develop the skills, then why are you losing? You're not putting the time and effort in, right? Or whatever the case may be. So there's those factors there. But I just think the the mentality that you get from MMA, um, it teaches you, who, it's like looking in a mirror. You see who you are. Uh, are you scared? Are you, do you back away or do you accept the challenge? Or do you face the challenge head on and you want to take it, no matter what the consequences are. You know, you win, you lose, you, you, you to draw, it doesn't matter. But you were willing to face that challenge. And that's, you know, you're willing to do that yourself. And so you can face yourself, oh man, I... I really failed at that relationship because I put the time and time and effort in. I failed in my fight because I didn't I didn't spend the time sparring and rolling like I should have. Um, I didn't make weight because I didn't diet properly. You know, those are all things that we have to face, and sometimes we mess up. But can we redeem ourselves and make it right? There'll be a time and place where we won't be able to make things right anymore because we're dead. But until then, you know, I think we always have a shot to to do the right thing and be better. And if we can be a little bit better each day. Um, we're winning and we can help others do the same thing. And that's, you know, life gets better. That's a great attitude to have. Um, I, as you know, I was in the military for a long time. And when it comes to leadership or when it comes to being part of a team, which is what you are, we learn really early on that you don't accomplish anything, nor do you get better by putting people down or, or holding them back. You need to, uh, lift them up. You need to empower them. You need to help them become better people because that in turn is going to push you to become a better person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, MMA is an individual sport. You're the only one fighting in there, but it does take a team. You know, you need guys to to push you on the mat. You need someone to help you find a fight. You need, you know, you need medical people to do stuff for you and pull strings to get you in to get a medical done last minute. Um, all these people, you know, I, we have to be grateful for. Uh, we have to be grateful for the haters, the ones that say we shouldn't be doing it, the ones that say we suck, that we shouldn't be fighting. Well, you know, I always say this is I'm not living my life by by someone else's fears. So people say, oh, you should be fighting, you're too old, or you're whatever. I'm like, that's your fear. Mm-hmm. That's not my fear. Your fear is that you're too old to fight. So that's why I shouldn't be fighting. Well, I don't live by your rules. You don't dictate my life. When I feel I'm too old, then I'll quit. If I'm taking too much damage in a fight because my age factor, um, not be able to train, not be able to protect myself properly, well, then I have to make that decision of, okay, it's time to quit fighting. But I haven't had that happen yet. You know, I've lost because of lack of cardio, because of injuries, and I wasn't able to train, and I still took the fight. Also, I'm not losing any sleep over the fact that I lost the fight to a guy that's trying to get into the UFC because um, it was a good fight. Mm-hmm. I gave him a hell of a fight. It was fun, and I'm not worse for wear leaving the fight, but I had a good experience. I have a new friend out of it, and, you know, I wasn't getting smashed in there, and I was like, I don't belong. So when I feel the time is I don't belong in that, then I, it's time to walk away. When I feel I don't have something to offer a student in the gym, it's time to sell the gym or quit teaching. You know, those are all things that time to move on when it's time to move on. But I'm not going to base my life off of someone else's fears or society doesn't like my view or it's too violent or it's whatever the, the societal view is. I don't beat to that drum, right? So I try and live my life according to me. And that doesn't always work out for me. And it doesn't always work out with people around me. Sometimes, you know, people get hurt. So you just, you just deal with that, right? So, yeah. When you talk about people that comment to you that maybe you shouldn't be fighting because you're too old, there's a saying, uh, not mine, of course, that the two saddest words in the English language are, what if? And they might be asking on their deathbed, you know, what if I had gotten in a fight? Or if only I had gotten in a fight or tried fighting? Uh, you're not going to have to worry about that because you, you've done it. Do you, do you have any regrets? Yeah. Um, no, not really. I mean, you could look back on anything you do and go, well, I could have done this better. I could have trained harder for that fight and I might have had a different result. Or, you know, I could have done this better in a relationship or this better business-wise I could have. But, but at the end of the day, I'm living my life how I want to live it. You know, could I spend more time doing things for my business? Maybe that other people do. Yeah, you, they, probably. But I really enjoy the lifestyle I have. The freedom of my schedule, my... This, the teaching schedule I have, the ability to go off, to take off for a weekend and coach fighters, um, to be able to do that, knowing I have great people working with me at the gym to keep it running while I'm not home. Um, that's a lifestyle I like. And so, you know, I could, 
could I make other things areas better? Sure. Um, I'm not a micromanager that way. I, I'm pretty loose and casual and like, I like that lifestyle. Um, sure, make mistakes. And I, I'm very forgiving of people when they make mistakes because I know how I am. Mm -hmm. I try not to, you know, hold people too accountable for some things because I know I don't hold myself accountable for everything, you know, and that's, that's just how I am as a person. Um, doesn't mean I couldn't do better. Doesn't mean I couldn't try harder at certain things, but in the end of the day, I'm responsible then for the consequences of those actions. And only me am I responsible. I can't blame someone else for not having success in a fight or not having success in my business because it's mine. So I have to take ownership for that, right? So mm -hmm. um, come hell or high water, it all falls back on me and I'm, I have to be okay with that. And I am. So if tomorrow's the last day, I like feel like I did my thing and I'm okay with that. So. Well, that's uh, got to give you a lot of peace of mind. So that's that's really cool. Let's take a second now and move on to the fight game, uh, fight management. Being a fight promoter yourself, you probably have a unique perspective on this. I've noticed lately, especially in the past couple three weeks, there's been a huge amount of uh, fighters and fights dropping out of fights at, at, at the last minute. I know Unified MMA 55 in, in Toronto. They lost, I don't know how many fight, fights, it was a whole bunch. Uh, both Samurai and Fight League Atlantic this past weekend lost their main events the day of or the day before the, the, the fights. And now you are going yeah. to this bare knuckle fight at Havoc uh, last minute. What are your thoughts, two, two questions in, in one, what are your thoughts as a promoter on the number of fights and fighters are, that are not happening based on different reasons? Uh, and you know, and the fight promoters having to scramble to still put on a fight card. And then tell me all about uh, also how you decided, you and Cal Kostiniak, I guess, uh, decide to help out Havoc and fight last minute. Yeah, I again, it's a, it's a crazy dynamic, the fight game, because again, you're, you're dealing with personal nerves and anxieties that we put on ourselves as a fighter. Um, we're worried about what people think, what the, our, the fans, what they're going to say if we lose, what are my family and friends going to think if I lose. Um, we, we start playing that narrative in our head and it starts messing with us and we start thinking um, it's something more than it is, which is, again, anxiety, right? Anxiety is living in the, living in the future, projecting something that hasn't happened yet, you know, or you're living in the past rehashing stuff that happened that you can't change. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we can do is live in the moment. And so fighters will get caught up in that, man, if I take this fight on short notice and if I lose, wow, you know, these guys are going to talk shit and this guy on the internet, this and that. Like, I don't even know where all these forums are where people talk shit. I don't even know how to find them. I'm too dumb on the computer. <laughs> but, you know, the fans, the, the, the fans in the stands complaining, they're not the ones in there fighting. You know, the fighter is. Then you get the promotion side of things where if a guy fights and loses, does he get another fight? Does his pay go up? You know, and I think that's the knock on the UFC. The thing, one thing I don't like about the UFC is doing is everything is based off of your record. Mm -hmm. And so if you lose your fight, your pay doesn't go up. If you lose your fight, you go down in rankings. If you lose your fight, you really risk getting cut because they only, it's a, it's a winner's only environment. Which that's their that's their thing, which and I get. If that's what you want your policy to be, your whatever your your business model to be, I, good for you. But it also then, as a fighter and a coach and as a manager, we have to be picky about who we fight, because if we lose the fight, we know we're going to get cut. Mm -hmm. If we lose the fight, our pay doesn't go up, and they and they they pay low for their revenue they make. Right. So the fighters go, man, I got to be smart about everything I do, because if I take a fight just for fun or it'll be exciting for the fans, but I lose that fight. Well, now there's all these consequences, right? Negative consequences. And so by the UFC making it that their policies that way, very few fighters will take risks. Now, when they fight, fight, they fight safe because they know if they go for the kill, there's a chance they're going to get killed. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to risk that. So now they're fighting safe. So the fights aren't as entertaining as they could be because the fighter's fighting safe. And I get that. And you have to plan for that if you want to stay in the big leagues and work your way up the ladder. But it's not entertaining to the fans. And it's not truly being a warrior and being a fighter. Mm -hmm. You're now playing a game. And I get that. And you have to if you're going to be in the game. Right? You can't go to a IBGF grappling tournament and do a whole bunch of you know, ADC rule stuff like, oh, wait a minute, you're not playing the, the, the rules say this. 
this is our game here. Well, I don't want to play that game. Well, then don't play the game. You should have registered, right? So you have to know what you're getting into. And don't bitch about it when you're there because you're the one that agreed to it. So I think fighters, they get, you know, the stress of a fight, a fight camp, all this stuff going on, and external um, stresses, relationships, the girlfriend, the boyfriend, you know, all this stuff that's put on you before a fight. And then they're supposed to go out there and perform. And they know the consequence if they don't win, or they, they, they play the consequence in their mind that, that becomes a stressor. It hasn't happened yet. They haven't even fought yet or lost yet, but they're playing in their mind, what if I lose? And so, I mean, these are the, the consequences. And so, you know, if you lose your fight on a local show, well, if you're not 10 and 0, you won't get signed by the UFC, mm -hmm. right? So, if you want to get picked up in the big shows, you have to have a really good record. And sometimes it's not even about you didn't even fight good fighters but you have a good record and you're getting yeah. picked up. It's the optics. And that drives me mental because you're not even ready to be there to fight the better fighters now that are good because you really have a soft record um, because you just took the fights that you knew were majority in your favor, 70, 80% in your favor if you fought that guy. Nine out of 10 times you beat that guy. Well, those fights to me, it should only happen. Your opponent pulls out last minute and this guy's the only guy willing to fight you. Okay. That we're going to fight. I should beat this guy every time. But it's MMA. You never know. You could lose. So that's a risky factor too, right? Mm -hmm. Fighting the guy you should beat. Whatever. But so the local shows suffer because guys are being picky because they want this the right fight. Best get pro because they want to build their record in the right way to get to Dana White's Contender Series, to get to PFL, to get to wherever they're going. They need a good record. And hopefully it's a good enough fight that they can learn from it. And then each fight camp, as they go along, they get better. The pay gets better as they go along. The local promotion can build that fighter up and have someone to market. And then if they get that guy into the UFC or Bellator or PFL or wherever they're going, karate combat, they can use that as a marketing thing as we got that yep. guy they're here. Set. They're set. And they use that as a badge to advertise why they're good, why you should fight for them versus another promotion across the street. Um, and so I get all that. But... Promoters have to then realize what they're creating on their own. Yep. I like the old pride days in the sense that you'd have a guy that have a 50-50 record, but and he always fought every show. Like, how is that guy still here? He lost his last five fights. But every fight he has is entertaining as hell. The fans did never care. you never disapp never disappointed in his fight. So you tuned in every time because it was great. And I think they realized that the freak show fights, the mismatches, whatever, they were entertaining. And so as a promotion, they 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 bought into that and the fighters bought into it and they knew that, man, I'm going to go fight my heart out for these guys. They're paying me well. I'm doing what I love. And if I lose, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm still doing what I love. Win or lose, I get, to, you know, I always talk about, you know, you talk about hockey, you know, old school guy, original six hockey. I was a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. And, you know, growing up in Alberta, I cheer for Edmonton too. Mm -hmm. But, dude, oh, I haven't won a cup since you were born in 1967. I said, yeah, and guess what? They're still sold out every year. The mm -hmm. fans still buy their merchandise and they still cheer for them. And they haven't won in how long? There's fighters that could be like that. Guys that have never won the title, fight fight after fight and lose, but they're entertaining fights. What's wrong with that? You know, so I think promoters should adopt that a little bit more. Um, and some and some do, and some, you know, don't do it as well as others. But I think that's why fighters then overall are being much more picky and then come down to fight week. If the stars don't align, they don't feel like everything's perfect. They didn't have a great camp. They got to tweak their knee or whatever. Now they're going to be, well, I, I'm, I got the flu. I, I can't fight. Or they just worked up in their head that the guy they're fighting is bigger and better than them. And they psyched themselves out that they can't win. And they got to they gotta pull out now because they have no confidence that they can win this fight. But originally when they signed it, they thought it was a good fight. But, you know, you doubt yourself. You doubt your own training. So then all of a sudden this other person because bigger and better than they are. But in reality, once you're in there and fighting, you realize after, even if you lose a fight, you have to, why was I so nervous? Why was I so worked up? It was yeah. just another man in there fighting me, another woman in there fighting. You make them bigger than better than they are. That even if they beat you, you know you belonged in there and it was still a good experience. So why was I so stressed out? Why was I freaking out yeah. beforehand? Why was I you know, so nervous at weigh-ins? Why was I so all these, why did all these things come up in my mind? And I think that's why guys back out. Um, 
And I know what it's like as a promoter to have fighters back out. That's why I, I'm grateful that the Left Wars Commission is the way it is. I'm allowed to do amateur fights. Um, the places that can't do amateur fights, the commissions are killing the sport. And they say they're there for the safety of the sport and for the fighters and for all this stuff. But truly, their their mandates should say that you're not. You know, you can say, oh, we're all about hockey. We're all about the NHL. But you don't support junior hockey. You don't have minor hockey. You don't allow, you don't even allow kids to play hockey in your province, but yet you, you want an NHL team, you know, that's counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. So the commissions have to get on board. Lethbridge, I'm lucky. I'm allowed to do amateur fights. I can do pro fights. That makes sense for my show budget wise, like who sells tickets, who, you know, give it, give the fighter the experience they need, give another guy a shot to come fight. If I can afford it, if I can fly them in or not fly them, in, whatever it may yep. be. But I can, I book, you know, for my show in April, April 20th, I've already got like 18, 19 fights confirmed. Wow. You know, and what people say, why do I book so many? Because what if I lose six of them? Mm -hmm. I still have a full fight card, you know, and I know how to run my show. We start on time. Our, we don't take breaks between fights. My intermission is 15 minutes long. We're right back at it. Why? Because I know I have to get through 19 fights. Yeah. You know, if they're all first round knockouts, great. If they all go the distance, not good. You know, what I, mean? I pray for knockouts, you know, and uh, because we need to, we need to fight to, the night to go quick, right? So when you only book twelve fights, and some of it's because commissions tell you you can only book this many fights, you can only book these rounds because we don't want to be here all night. Well, yeah, the part is because promoters have said, oh, the show starts at seven o'clock, and then they don't start the show till eight, and then the fights go to decision, yeah. they take a break here, they take a break there. Next thing you know, it's midnight. And they've only had eight fights and they've been there for five hours. So the commission goes, we don't want to be here all night. We'll be here till two in the morning if you had 12 fights, 15 fights. So they're making these rules based on that. Um, again, if promoters promoted better, they could probably get more fights in. If commissions understood the sport better and if the commissions had money on the line um, as a promoter and knew what a promoter did, if a commission knew what fighters went through ever, if they'd ever cut weight, if they even did a week of training, there'd be much more compassion for everyone involved in the sport and not just it's us against them and this constant, oh, we're here to help you. But your actions say otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're all great guys and we get along great, but you're 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 pouring rules that don't help the sport. You're having uh, rules for the promoter, fee, fee structures for the promoter. They're not helping this sport grow at all, right? So those are all things I see as being a promoter, as a fighter, as a coach, I see all angles of it. And so I'm very outspoken on these things because it's very frustrating because they're killing the sport. Yeah. And I was just, why do I, why am I fighting on another promoters? If I get hurt in my fight, caught up, hands broken, and I can't fight in April on my show, what's well, bad for my show? Yeah. I'm willing to take that chance because it may not happen, but also at the end of the day, I know my show will be fine. I've got lots of guys on the show. Uh, if I don't get to fight, I don't get to fight. There'll be another yeah. day, but it also helps Havoc out because I know it's like for a promoter to have fights back, back off and you spend all this money, all these commission fees, you put all this effort into it, you know, three, four, five months of work for one night and probably not make any money anyways. Yeah. And if you do make money, if you break it down per hour, you're making minimum wage. So what's it really worth all the time away from your family and your friends and, and missing work where you could have got paid good at work to do this thing you love? After a while, you're like, man, it ain't worth it. So to, to know when someone's going through that, I'm like, man, I got to help them out if I can. If I can jump in short notice and fight and fill a card or one of my guys can jump in, again, if it's a good fight for the guy and, we, and it's reasonable, we'll do it. If it's I have to have a guaranteed win, well, then you're not going to fight anywhere ever, right? If my fighter's looking for guaranteed wins, so be it. Now, if I have an up-and-coming guy I think has a good shot at making it to the UFC, for example, he's not going to take a fight on a week's notice against the guy that he's not ready for because he's yeah. only been training for two years. This guy's a 10 year vet. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to be, I'm not going to burn him. I'll burn myself on that because I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm not trying to get in the UFC. I'm just having fun. Yeah. I sleep at night, even if I lost, you know what I mean? I hate losing, but I'm not beating myself up over it either. But for my up and coming guys, you know, I'm going to protect them, make their careers as successful as possible. But also, can we help the promoter out? If I don't have anyone, I don't have anyone. You know, but I'll reach out to other gyms, other play. Hey, do you want to fight? There's a guy, they lost a fight. This is a good fight for you. Or 
two, two new fights, you know, like here's the guy and here's a guy, you know, I've, I've been sending names because my card's so full. I've been sending names of guys that put, they're just getting their names in now saying, Hey, I want to fight. Well, man, I've had names in for two months. I send that name on to another promotion that I know is looking for a guy because they, they may not have their card full yet. And maybe they don't need him either. I don't know, but at least it's helping that fighter get a fight. Sure. And it could be helping the, the promotion get another fight that they didn't have. They didn't know that, they didn't know that guy. That guy reached out to me because I've been around forever. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how my take on it. And, you know, again, fighters fight. Let's go, let's go do it. Let's see what happens. Let's challenge ourselves and let's have fun. Let's support each other in the sport. Um, even though you're my competition, you're a promoter and I'm a promoter. We can, there's enough people in this country for everyone to be successful. You know, and that's how I look at Even with the gyms, there's enough people in each city that every gym can be busy and successful. Mm -hmm. So let's just help each other be better. And guys, come and go where you want to go. I get it. You want to do what's best for you. I'm doing what's best for me. And hopefully it all works out and we can all uh, sit back after and have a few laughs about it. So tell the story about how you got involved with Bare Knuckle, uh, with Havoc and getting this fight. I know you mentioned to me before the interview, but maybe you could just uh, re mention it to the fans watching now. Yeah, they were, they had some fights fall off. And uh, um, I think it was Jesse that messaged me and said, hey, you got anyone that can fight this guy? Or I have a, I'm have looking for an opponent for this guy. I'm like, oh, I'll see who I have. And they said, well, no, we mean, do you want to fight? And I was like, oh, actually, I wasn't thinking about fighting at that date and time because um, I was going to fight the Rumble on April 20th was my plan. And I said, but, you know, I get it. You're short. Um, it'll be a fun fight. You know, the guy's uh, 12 and 4 is a pro boxer, lots of experience, um, lots of years training. Um, it looked like a tough fight. And that's, you know, I like that. I like the idea of that challenge, uh, fighting a boxer in a bare knuckle fight. See what you can do and go out there and have fun. And it's going to help a promoter. Um, um, so it's a win-win in my opinion. The fighter that was going to fight, he didn't lose a fight. The promotion didn't lose a fight and I get to step up and, and challenge myself. And, uh, you know, it, it looks, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I've always wanted to do bare knuckle and I, I, I've talked with BKFC about fighting for them and, um, I'm trying to work something out for them in the future here. Uh, this just came okay. And short notice came up and say, yeah, let's do it. Let's have some fun. And, uh, may the best man bleed. Oh, I like that. You should, uh, you should patent that or sorry, copyright it. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on. Uh, last couple questions. Uh, yeah. you mentioned that, well, I mentioned Cal Kostiniak, one of your students, he had a tough loss a couple weeks ago at Unified and he's back at it again, now bare knuckle. Uh, yeah. how's he faring after that loss and, and where is he right now? How's he doing? Yeah, he's doing great. You know, again, he got caught It's one of those things in MMA. You're you, when the bell goes, you're in a blender and you gotta be ready. And, uh, the other guy executed well, you know, he had a, he, his cow was like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. Shouldn't have done. Well, you can say it about everything. You you could have done this instead. He would have countered with this. So it's a game of inches and you got caught. Yeah. You didn't, you weren't hurt physically at all. You know, you're just pissed off that you lost because you made a mistake. Um, you came out too strong. Um, opposite what you thought you were going to do. You know, you just, it's a fight game and you only, you only have a few fights. How do you learn? You're learning on the job, right? And you're like, oh man, I'll never do that again. Uh, you learn from that, right? So he was right back in the gym. He was training. He's, you know, if anything came up, we knew we had the two week suspension, so we couldn't go anywhere for that. Um, yep. And then I was like, I thought he was technically still suspended by Havoc time. I was like, oh no, that's three weeks apart, not two. Mm -hmm. So he actually eligible fight. And because it's bare knuckle, it's different than MMA. Um, it's not going to affect his MMA career, uh, record wise, taking a jumping in short notice on a fight against a guy with more, more, more experience. But it gives him fight experience. It gives another, yeah. you know, mini fight, you know, fight camp. To, he was helping me get ready for the fight. So he was in everyday training with me anyways, doing, getting ready for bare knuckle. So now when the fight comes up, it's like, okay, I, you know, now we got to focus on him and, you know, make sure he's on weight and all that type of stuff. Do a little few tweaks at the end. But again, he's one of the, he's, to me, he's one of the, um, the last of the breed of the guys that actually want to fight. Give me the, I don't care what the rule set is. Tell me the rule set. We'll show up and we'll fight. And that's kind of how Cal is. And that's, that's why he, I think he fits in well with my team and he matches up with all the old school guys uh, that we have with the team that that's the way they think. Let's just fight, you know? And uh, again, I think it's gonna be a fun fight. He's fighting Josh Kitchen, who's an old school warrior as well, who just wants to fight and doesn't care who. And he loves that fighting guys from my gym and he's trained at my gym lots because we all think the same way. We feel the same way. Let's go for dinner. Let's go to the mm -hmm. night. Let's have, let's fight each other and let's go for dinner after. You know, and that's 
that that's the sport we're in and because we're warriors and we want to fight. And um, so it's going to be a great night. And then uh, they're, they're looking for another fight. One of my, one of my students, uh, Jamie Ingram, um, I said, anyone on the team want to fight in a couple of weeks or a week, whatever it was on Havoc. And he said, put me in coach. So I said, okay, let's see if they can find you an opponent. So they got a tough opponent. They got it from Extreme Couture in Toronto. And it's going to be a tough fight. But, you know, again, what, mm-hmm. just go see what happens. You've got skills. What are we going to take from this fight? What are we going to learn from this fight? Win or lose. You know, you're going to learn something from it. And, again, what, what everyone else is going to, Jim, going to see. Yeah, you, you, you don't fight unless you step up. You've got to be willing to fight. The students will see that he took a fight on a week's notice. Uh, it doesn't matter if he wins or loses. It's the attitude, right, that we want to see. Can we challenge ourselves? Can we, can we do the things we need to do to be mentally and physically tough? You know, too much we cave to, cave to things and addictions and all that. Well, we have the ability to stop that, but we choose not to. So this is all about that. You know, we, we have a saying that uh, Jamie one of, he teaches kids classes, and one of the things they say at every class is, who can do hard things? And the students all yell back, we can. Or I can, you know, so that means a lot to me that that's, they implemented that into the little bow out again in the class because we all can do hard things, but we choose not to most of the time. Mm-hmm. So the fact that Jamie's stepping up and, and willing to do something hard, um, that's, that impresses me. You know, I don't care if he wins or if he wins. If he wins, great. We all want to win. That's a wonderful thing. But outside of that, what was the mentality going into it? What's going to be the mentality after it? And the fact that he was willing to do something difficult, you know? And that's that's important to me because that's leadership right there, so. Yep, love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, last question I have for you, and I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up, is that uh, you talked about OGs and, and, and old school fighters. You you bred one. You, you made one yourself. Jordan, your son Jordan Meehan. Uh, for such a young man, he's got such an incredible amount of experience, and he's one of those old school fighters as well. I happen to know that uh, this isn't public knowledge, but I'm sure you know, is that uh, he was actually going to go in short notice to fight a, a very tough opponent at the last Unified card. He was going to fight, I think it was a Jack Grant or the other guy who was going to be fighting for the UFC uh, at the Unified card. Um, the fact that he's come out of retirement, and I got a chance to see him fight live at, at uh, Prospect Fighting Championship last year. Uh, yeah. It's a thrill to have him back. Just tell us how Jordan's doing these days and what's up for him next. Yeah, doing great. Uh, he's going to take that fight against that uh, um, top Russian fighter that trains with Khabib. Oh, um, and guy, it, yeah, yeah. it just worked. It worked out that the the Russian fighter couldn't get his visa straightened out in Los yeah. Angeles to get into Canada. Otherwise, that fight would have happened. And uh, you know, take the fight on short notice. But that's you know, get if you don't if you don't challenge yourself, how do you get greatness, right? And that's what that was Jordan's mentality going to that. Um, he's got a baby boy it was due last Friday so we're still waiting for another baby to become mm-hmm. around and so um, another uh, grandson for me and another grandchild for me and uh, another uh, baby for Jordan so that right there is just we'll see what happens with the baby when it finally gets here and everything goes on with all that so um, when he fights again I, I don't know because um, there's just too many variables right now in life to, to decide well you know, again, he'd like to fight in in March, April. Um, if something comes up, maybe even May. Uh, we've been talking to different places, but again, it's hard that you don't want to commit to something when you don't know what's going on with day to day life right yeah. now, as far yeah. as training yeah. goes and babies and health and all that. Who knows what's going to happen, right? So we're just uh, hope, praying for the best and grateful for what we have. And uh, if he fights again, great. If he decides that ah, I'm just going to be a dad and work, then he had a great run and a good life and keep doing and challenge yourself in another area if that's what he chooses to do. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're not, we're not given tomorrow. So we have to be grateful for what we have today for sure. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, Lee, I think this interview has probably gone on about three times longer than I had planned, but I'll yeah. be honest. I was, uh, I, I loved every minute of hearing you speak. You've got so much experience. You've been around for so long. Uh, you've got such a great perspective on everything. Uh, I was, I was thrilled. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, great. I love uh, chatting with you every time. Uh, like you said, you've been around forever and uh, it's great to see you back doing this stuff because again, you do a great job and you're, you're definitely committed to the sport and um, love every chance I get to speak to you or see you in person. It's awesome. So appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. That's, that's very kind of you. It makes me feel pretty good.
All right, awesome. there you go, fight friends. Uh, Lee Meehan, owner of Canadian Martial Arts Centre in Lethbridge, fighting this weekend at Havoc FC 17 in Red Deer in Bare Knuckle Fight'em. Wish him luck and make sure you tune in and watch the fight.